This week, Nike released their latest cushioning setup called Joyride, and I've gotta say it's one of the most interesting and different looking kinds of cushioning setups we've seen in a long time. But how does it stack up to the competition? Let's find out. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and today I'm comparing Nike Joyride to Nike React and Adidas Boost. So obviously, because I'm comparing all three of these cushions, I had to bring all three of them to the studio. And over the last day or two, I've been running in each one of these shoes, and I think I'm ready to give you guys my thoughts and let you know which one I like the best. In this video, I'm not really gonna be comparing the uppers of each one of these shoes, because by now, you probably have a good understanding of Adidas Prime Knit and Nike Fly Knit. And because the Nike Joyride is pretty much made up entirely of Fly Knit on the upper, it's a pretty similar experience to what you get on the Nike Epic React. Of course, there are pros and cons to the Fly Knit versus the Prime Knit, and I'll make sure to leave a comparison video at the top of the screen where I talk about the differences between each. But like I said, for this video, we're just gonna be talking about the cushioning technology. So I'm gonna try and keep this one short and sweet. Starting things off with the old standby, we've got Boost, which was originally released in 2015. As you could probably tell from the styrofoam type look on the midsole of the sneaker, Boost is made up of tiny little Boost pellets that are compressed and heated together until they expand into the mold of a midsole. When Boost was first popularized, it was hailed as the most comfortable cushioning technology of all time. And I've gotta say, at the time, I totally agreed with that. It was the first shoe that I really stepped into and went, wow, that feels crazy. And for years, there wasn't really any real competition for Boost. It was just the king of the hill. Boost was originally designed as a running cushion. The Ultra Boost was supposed to be the best running sneaker of all time. And while the Ultra Boost did provide a super soft and super comfortable midsole, it did seem a little bit too soft and did sort of flatten out over time. Some runners found the shoe a little bit too mushy and they thought that the Boost didn't give you much lateral stability. And I have to agree, I don't think Boost, at least not in the Ultra Boost or even the Ultra Boost 19, is the best running cushion. I do feel like it's a little bit too soft and it doesn't bounce you back as much as I would like. And even in the Ultra Boost 19, where they've stabilized the heel area, so you should get a little bit more lateral stability, it's still not the most stable running shoe in the world. However, for lifestyle wear, Boost is incredible. If you need a shoe that you can wear all day with no issues whatsoever, Boost is the cushion to do it. And to this day, people swear by Boost. They still say it's the most comfortable thing they've ever put on their feet. And I've gotta say, it's still insanely comfortable. Then, a few years later after Boost was first released, Nike released the ironically named Nike React Cushion. It's ironic because they were reacting to Boost, if you see what I'm saying. React quickly became Nike's flagship cushioning technology, and for running, I definitely prefer React. Nike React is significantly softer than Nike's outgoing Lunar Lawn technology, but it's not as soft as Zoom X, which is almost too soft in certain conditions. React, although slightly less soft than Boost, at least in my opinion, I've heard differing opinions on whether people think React or Boost is softer, but I think most people agree with me that React is probably the less soft version. I find React better for runs because while still soft, it offers a lot more response and a lot more bounce. I've run in these Nike Epic Reacts a lot more than any of my pairs of Ultra Boosts, and while some of those pairs of Ultra Boosts have bottomed out, this one hasn't yet. It's been pretty surprisingly durable. And even though the footprint of this shoe is slightly thinner than the Ultra Boost, it still feels a little bit more stable, and that's because I think the foam is slightly more firm. But when it comes to overall comfort, I think I still prefer Boost, because although the React is still soft and comfortable, it just doesn't have that cloud-like feel of Boost. And then finally, we get to Nike Joyride, Nike's latest cushioning technology. As you can probably see, Nike Joyride is made up of tons of little tiny TPE beads. TPE is essentially a mix of rubber and plastic, so if you were to squeeze the beads, you'd feel more of a rubbery feeling than a foamy feeling. This particular shoe, the Joyride Run, has four different pockets or bags of TPE beads. The reason Nike created these segments is to prevent the beads from from sort of totally displacing themselves in certain areas so you wouldn't ever bottom out. Something else that's kind of interesting that Nike did with this shoe is that you don't have a standard insole. Instead, you just have a thin piece of fabric over top of these bead pockets, I guess you'd call them. And because of that, you really feel the beads against your feet. And I've gotta say, it's a weird feeling. It almost feels like your foot's falling into a tiny ball pit and the balls are just kind of coming around your foot. This metaphor is getting weird. Large round sand, just go with that, large round sand. The whole idea behind this joyride cushion is giving you a personalized fit, not so much a soft cushion. And because of that, you get a much firmer ride in this shoe, more than I think you would expect. Apparently Nike Joyride was designed as a recovery technology. It's something that you wear on your slower running days. Joyride is meant to alleviate pressure points by having the beads displace around your foot. So when you're running in this shoe, you're not really gonna get any sort of bounce or springiness from it. You're just gonna get impact absorption. So when you think about the cushion in that way, it does make a lot of sense. No, it's not gonna be anywhere close to as soft as something as Boost or React, but it should help you alleviate some of the pressure. But what's kind of weird to me is that they're actually adding this cushion to a bunch of lifestyle models that 
aren't really designed to alleviate pressure, they're just designed to look cool. So it almost seems like there's a disconnect there, like Nike's marketing this cushion for one thing, but then using it for something else. So I'm not sure exactly what that's about. There are some downsides to this cushion. The first is that as of right now, it seems like it's really expensive. Like this shoe is a $180 shoe, and the only difference between this and the Epic React is the cushion. The upper is pretty much the same. In fact, I'd even say that the upper on the Epic React might be more premium than the upper on the Joyride. And for 30 more dollars than the Epic React, you would hope that the Joyride would be more comfortable. But in my experience, it's just not. Another thing is how the beads feel on your foot. Yes, they do mold to your foot as you wear the shoe throughout the day, but for the first like 30 minutes to an hour, it kind of feels like you've got a crumpled up sock in the front of the shoe because there's just so many beads in the front of the shoe. They say there's not a lot of them, but it really feels like it. And it's not really a feeling that I really enjoy. And then the other thing about Joyride is that I thought it was supposed to be a personalized fit. And I would assume that the more you'd wear the shoe, the more it would feel like it molds to your foot. And I have found that throughout the day, the shoe does seem to mold to your foot over the last like four days that I've been wearing the sneaker. But if you take off the shoe for a couple hours or even a night, when you put your foot back into the shoe, it feels like all the beads have just kind of gone back into place and you've lost that personalized fit. So it's almost like you have to re-customize or re-personalize the shoe every time you step into it, which is kind of annoying. That said, it's not particularly uncomfortable. The only thing I don't like about it is that sort of crumpled sock feeling. It does feel comfortable after you've worn it in for about 30 minutes to an hour. And I don't mind it. It's just a lot of money for a cushioning technology that isn't that great. That's all just my opinion though. Maybe I'm not the right person for Joyride. Maybe it's not designed for me. Or maybe I just have to wear the shoe for like three months before it really starts to break in. I have no idea. So to wrap things up, Nike Joyride is by far the firmest cushion out of the three. It's designed to alleviate pressure points and to personalize itself to your foot, which I think is a good thing. However, I don't totally think this cushion is for me, and it's not something that I would really wear if I wasn't running. It's definitely not a bad feeling, it's not uncomfortable, but when you have options like React or Boost, I would definitely go with these over this. As for React, this would be my favorite cushion for running because it gives you great response, great bounce, it's super comfortable underfoot, and it doesn't feel unstable. And then for lifestyle wear, Boost is still life. You can't get this sort of cloud-like feel from any other cushion, and I absolutely love that about it. But now I would love to know your thoughts on these three different cushioning technologies and which one you like best. So make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.